So in the last video, we talked about pure metals, metals that are made of the same type of atom in that sea of electrons that is formed around the cations. But what happens if I take two metals or three metals and put them together, and those are non-pure metals? Those are called alloys. Um, and you see over here, there's different representations of alloys depending on what you're mixing together. Um, so substance A might be, you know, the gray, the lighter gray might be one type of metal, the darker gray might be a, a different type of metal. Um, and you see that those ion or those metal ions, those or metal atoms, those darker metal atoms are a little bit bigger than the light gray ones. You can see in substance D, again, we've got uh, a light gray and a dark gray, two different types of metals. The dark gray in this case is smaller than the lighter gray. And then you can see in C here, um, there's no disruption to the shape or the arrangement. Everything is still very linear and very organized. And the um, darker gray metal just kind of like fits in the spaces. So those are just different types of alloys. You don't need to know the different types of alloys, but know that not all alloys are made the same. You can see like in substance C, um, it's an alloy. There's two different types of metals, but there's not really a disruption to the original structure. Um, in substances A and D, they're alloys because they're mixtures of different metals, but you see that now the uh, light gray atoms are aligned differently than they were before and they're not as organized. Um, and so that's just a different type of alloy. So an alloy is just a mixture of elements, of metallic elements. Um, and it's kind of weird because in all actuality, these metals right here do contribute to the sea of electrons. So why isn't it considered a bond? And it's just not. They're just considered mixtures because they can be separated relatively easily. Um, we don't consider them to be uh, chemically bonded. By definition, a metallic bond exists between only atoms of the same metal. Once we introduce other metals into it, it's now considered an alloy. Okay, so the atoms of one metal can fit between the atoms of the other. Like in C, they could replace atoms of the other, like in A or D. It just kind of depends on what the alloy is. Okay. Um, alloys are important because they have a lot of commercial applications. So depending on what property a manufacturer needs, depending on the use of the metal, um, we're going to go ahead and mix certain things together to make different alloys for different, uh, different commercial applications. So for example, stainless steel. Stainless steel um, is a mixture of iron, chromium, and nickel. And it's an alloy of those three things put together and it allows it to not rust as easily um, and just be a really good for say cooking, okay? Um, then we get things like brass. Brass is made of copper and zinc, right? And has different properties than copper or zinc themselves. Cast iron, like you see here, this cast iron skillet is a combination of iron and carbon put together. Um, and that is considered an alloy as well, all right? Um, and most alloys have different properties than either pure metal involved. And so that's a little bit weird because when we think about mixtures, we often think about things retaining their properties, which individually the atoms retain their properties. But once we put them together, the overall substance has different properties in either metal. So for example, example, pure iron is actually softer than um, one of its alloys. Steel is an alloy that has iron in it. Um, and it's actually softer when it's pure iron than with steel, which is why steel is useful in commercial um, applications and buildings and um, in uh, commercial applications such as buildings. Um, in pure iron, the atoms can slide over each other easier because of their organization, like the top picture here. Um, these would be like just rolling over each other very easily. Once we put them together in their alloy form, where we add in carbon atoms, which are these smaller atoms, we now see that they're not as organized. And so there's not as much rolling over each other that can be done here as in this top picture. So the top picture, you can see these would roll just like ball bearings right over each other. This one right here, there's not as much organization going on. So it'd be a lot harder for them to roll over each other. And as a result, steel is a lot harder than um, pure iron is, for example. So that's just an example of different properties that might come about when you have an alloy. So back to the picture that we originally talked about, this should be bond type three, not bond type two. Um, so this was the original picture that you saw. So why did I include this picture? Um, the biggest thing to remember about metallic bonds is the sea of electrons that floats around the cations. That sea of electrons gives the metallic properties to metals. It gives them the ability to conduct. It gives them the ability to be malleable and ductile. It gives them the ability to have luster. Um, so all of those properties we talked about with metallic bonds are related to the sea of electrons, just like the properties of ionic substances are related to the strength of the lattice energy holding them together, just like the um, properties of covalent substances are related to the strength of the intermolecular force that's holding the molecules together. So those are that's the biggest thing to remember about metallic bonds.